Hi guys, you know what time it is. It's time for another Countdown to Christmas movie review. Full disclosure, I am not feeling well today, but since Hallmark says Christmas only comes once a year for two and a half months, I am going to push through these reviews and if I can get through Merry Thanksgiving weekend with eight new movies, which means eight reviews, then I certainly can get through this. All right, last night at 8 p.m. Eastern, A Not So Royal Christmas premiered on the Hallmark Channel. Now, it's starring uh, Will Kemp and Brooke Dorsey. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Last year, Will Kemp was in Jolly Good Christmas, and it was not good. Even though I love seeing him run around London with a lot of brown, beautiful brown people, I um, legitimately did not like his accent. They had him in London playing a, an American, a Texan at that, and it just sounded like he had poop in his, like stuck in his mouth. Like it was just, it was terrible. And I love, I like Will Kemp, I do. So, and then I was not a huge fan of his new series with uh, Lacey Chabert, his new mystery series. I don't think I ever really made it all the way through. Like I saw bits and pieces after attempting to watch like a million times. So when A Not So Royal Christmas was advertised and I saw the previews, I said to Megan, like, I don't have a lot of faith in what this is. Hold on. Sorry about that. I heard weird sounds coming from my bathroom. It was like, what was going on? Yeah. So after um, Jolly Good Christmas was not great, Brooke Dorsey, she starred last year in A Fabled Holiday with Ryan Privy, And it was very trippy and weird. It was like we're part of like an adult fairy tale where it seems like everybody's on something. I either gave that a seven or eight. It wasn't terrible. You just had to get into the whole thing. But but it definitely wasn't their best, right? And like I think one of my favorite movies with Brooke is June and January. And so and I did like Will Kemp in the Christmas Waltz with Lacey Chabert. Um, you know, so I was willing to give this a try. Now, some of you will watch these royal movies and really piss me off. You're so sick of the royals. You're so sick of the royals. Okay, well, stop writing that under the Hallmark um, posts on Facebook. If you're sick of royal movies, just skip it, even though I'm going to tell you again. Inventing the Christmas Prince uh, last year with um, Ronnie Rowe Jr. and Tamara um, Maori Housley. Um, was not a typical Royals movie. It had nothing to do with the Royals. So I'll tell y'all always to go back and see that movie because I love that movie. That was one of my favorites from Countdown to Christmas 2022. So if you're back on here and you're complaining that you're over the Royal movies, well, the Royal La Nanny last year did really well. So a bunch of y'all did tune into that and do like some Royal movies. A Not So Loyal Royal Christmas was actually... I think playing on the whole theme of why royals are so funny and thinking about them around the holidays is so funny. I think it kind of merged the worlds of being a normal person along with royal life. And I just thought it was like a different spin. And if I haven't said it, I'm giving this movie a 7 out of 10, which is not bad. Remember my rules, 7 or above, I think you should definitely tune in. I think that I love the two leads and I honestly think that what made this movie kind of special were the two leads. So welcome back Brooke and welcome back Will because I just thought this concept was blended very well. I also thought the two leads had chemistry and it's not the greatest movie Hallmark has put out this year. It's not the greatest movie Hallmark has ever put out. It won't be in the top five. But the things that worked in this movie really worked. Now, let me get into the premise. Brooke plays Charlotte. She works for uh, Royal Gossip. It's like a Royal Gossip tabloid. She works for them. And she ends up playing a reporter that goes to the palace. and But she tells them that she works for Monarch Insider. Which Monarch Insider sounded just as... as tabloid-esque as royal gossip entertainment so I like I really wasn't understanding but apparently in this fake world of Sir Hagen Norden 
which I found out doesn't really exist, but it's supposed to be somewhere in Scandinavia. So guys, I thought we'd be back in England this week because of Will Kemp, but we're not in back. We're not back in England. We're somewhere in made up Scandinavia. Um, so yeah, Charlotte is tasked with trying to finally get a picture of Count Lars, who is the Count of Sir Hagen Norden. When she gets there, she can't tell them that she's really a tabloid journalist, even though she's secretly a his history buff, like her mom was a historian. So she rolls in and she says she's part of the um, Monarch Insider. She wants to meet Count Lars. And actually she sneaks in when Will Kemp's character, whose name is Adam, and he's currently a landscaper for the Royals, was actually in the castle trying to return like a gold medallion that is from the real Count Lars. While he's in there, he starts playing the piano like, Adam, who does that? It's not your castle, but yet you're playing the piano. I think that is completely a human thing to do. Um, you know, especially to just go into somebody else's home and make yourself at home while you're waiting to return something. Anyway, as he's playing the piano, Charlotte sneaks away from the tour and she bumps into who she thinks is Count Lars and sparks immediately fly. Now the monarch, they're a bit upset that this even happened because the real Count Lars met some American at his on spring break at Daytona, baby. And he decided that he found love in De Daytona and he is gonna stay with his American Bay and he doesn't wanna be a count anymore. So Sir Hagen has been, um, Sir Hagen has been losing a lot of tourism because there's no face. The count is supposed to be the face for this community. We see that this community has suffered a lot because tourism is down. Anyway, now that Charlotte sees Adam and thinks that he's Count Lars, the royal monarch decide that uh, Adam is going to have to continue playing Count Lars until they come up with a better solution to maybe get the real Count Lars back. Before that could even happen, both Brooke, and, uh, whoo, not their real names, both Charlotte and Count Lars start to have feelings for each other, but they're building a relationship on a lie. She's really a tabloid journalist um, with, you know, royal gossip entertainment. He is really just a regular schmegular landscaper that has actually returned to Sir, Hog Sir Hagen um, Norden after 10 years of traveling. He's been to seven countries. He's kind of non-committal and now he's a count and he has a lot of responsibility to the Sir Hagen community, including his mom that owns a bakery. As time goes on, Adam, AKA Count Lars, he figures out a way to help his community and to use his position of power the best way he can. By the way, let me show you um, the cast, some of the cast from this movie. Baby, we had some brown people in this, in this um, movie. Taylor Love plays Michael Hughes, who is a security guard at the palace. She gives tour guides there, her character, and she plays his love interest. And Taylor, if you're watching this, you are absolutely beautiful, babe. I hope I see you in future Hallmark movies. You're studying, and I hope, in, I hope you and Michael did get together. It seems like in the movie your characters got together, but I just thought it worked. It absolutely worked. You were stunning. I want to shout out all the brown people, brown and black people that were in this movie. I wish more of their faces were listed um, here so I could tell you who's who, but unfortunately we just have four of the cast listed here. And that's better than nothing. So we got our diversity and inclusion and the supporting cast really, it worked for them. All right, let me go back to the storyline. So yeah, um, now these two, they're falling for each other. L Count Lars is helping the community. It's now revealed um, that Charlotte really works for a tabloid. So she gets kicked out of the palace, honey. And a black man kicked her out of the palace. I thought that was interesting. And then um, later she goes to Adam's mom's bakery. Just thinking she's a local bakery lady that Count Lars really likes figures out that that's his mother and that Adam is not Count Lars. And so of course the two of these people realize they've been lying to each other and you can't build a relationship on lies. 
Adam's character ends up becoming and getting the honorary title of being the real Count Lars. Okay, I think I have to do a part two for this. Stay tuned.